Welcome back. On Monday the 19th of December, the Acting Chief Justice of Nigeria was in Lagos to commission the newly refurbished Court of Appeal. It was an interesting event, especially as it sparked discussions on how to decongest the court. This is what the Court of Appeal in Lagos used to look like. This building was commissioned on October 1st, 1963 by the first president of Nigeria, Dr. Namdi Azikwe. At that time, it was the seat of the Supreme Court. But following the federal government's directive in 1994 that all federal ministries and parastatals should relocate to Abuja, the federal capital territory, the Supreme Court moved and the Court of Appeal came to occupy this complex. Today, the court wears a new look and the acting CJN, some other judges, the state government, senior lawyers, the court staff and many others are here for the official commissioning. Retired justices and historians will really inform you that time and recent developments of more modern structures have taken away the glamour of this complex, which was once a national legacy. Since it was commissioned more than 50 years ago, it did not before now receive and witness the type of transformation in terms of structure and facilities that make it a befitting modern court. Goodwill messages came from the state government and the Nigerian Bar Association. Will we continue to support the judiciary in every way that will ensure effective and efficient dispensation of justice? I will ask that the Lagos Division should ensure that we have more courts here. We have two. I am applying with due respect the Lagos Division to have additional three more courts here. Because there are so many cases that are before the Court of Appeal pending for hearing, but because of issue of lack of space and also personnel, they have not been here for many years. So it's important we begin to add additional more courts in Lagos in order to ensure that we have quicker dispensation of justice. In his response to the request, the acting CJN says he does not believe that creating more courts or appointing more judges will lead to the congestion in the courts. The more divisions you create, the more cases get filed. The more judges and justices you appoint, the more cases that get filed, which points to the fact that we have really not hit the nail on the head. To me, the solution is simple. The solution lies in making every appeal to the Court of Appeal and the Supreme Court by leave. That is where the solution lies. It doesn't lie in multiplying the number of divisions and the judges. No. It lies in controlling the jurisdiction of the court, the, the quantity, the number of cases that get to the court, to the Court of Appeal and the Supreme Court. If we have 24 or so or 21 provisions, I mean, vacancies for the Supreme Court, we believe if we appoint that number, that will be the, the solution, the end of it. No, it isn't. Apart from the physical constraints that the Supreme Court has in terms of space, there is equally the other idea you should equally look at. Which of the countries in the whole world can you point to? that has that kind of number of justices on the Supreme Court bench. I commission this building of the glory of God and service of mankind. Amen. The Court of Appeal was established in 1976 as the second highest court in the country. The Lagos Division presently has eight justices who sit in two panels to hear appeals from all trial courts, state and federal, in Lagos. The acting CJN's comments has predictably elicited reactions from many lawyers. I spoke to two senior lawyers to get their views on the issue. What the judiciary needs is a fundamental restructuring such 
that the cases going up to the apex court will be sifted. Does it have a constitutional matter which is of national importance? Is it, uh, is it a matter, is, is, is a case uh, in nature in which there is a need uh, to seek leave to appeal? Unfortunately, right now, as soon as you ask for leave, the courts just give it. In my days on the bench, I observed clearly that uh, very often parties use the appeal process to stall on compliance with the court judgment. So the CJN is right and correct in his view that what you need is leave to appeal, not automatic right of appeal, as it will appear to have been the case over the years. Most of the courts across the country have shut down for the Christmas and New Year holidays. A lot of them are expected to resume on Tuesday the 3rd of January 2017. Before the vacation commenced, however, the courts had some interesting cases. We bring you a recap of some of the top stories we tracked. We begin with the report that Justice Namdi Dingba of the Federal High Court Abuja on Monday the 19th of December refused the request by the Ikiti State Governor Ayodele Fayashi to release some of his houses temporarily seized by the Economic and Financial Crimes Commission, EFCC. Justice Dingba had on July 20 granted the EFCC an order of interim for feature of the properties for 45 days, which lapsed on September 4. The Governor later applied to the court after the expiration of the order for the release of the properties. In opposing his application, the EFCC described it as academic on the grounds that it had got another forfeiture order from another judge, having discovered that Governor Fayoshi allegedly acquired the said assets using other individuals and firms. From there, we move to Edo State, where the Election Petition Tribunal has distilled five issues for determination for hearing in the petition filed by the governorship candidate of the People's Democratic Party, PDP, Pastor Osage Izeyamu, and his party, challenging the declaration of Mr. Godwin Obasaki of the APC as winner of the September 28, 2016 election in the state. The chairman of the election petition tribunal, Justice Ahmed Badamasi, has also announced January 11, 2017 for the commencement of the hearing of the petition. Justice Badamasi has listed five issues for determination, which include whether having regard to Section 31, Subsection 1 of the Electoral Act 2010 as amended, and Paragraph 4, Subsection 1 of the first scheduled veto, the person who purports to be the first petitioner along with the second petitioner in the instant petition is different in law from the person who sponsored as candidate of the second petitioner at the Edo State Governorship election held on September 28, 2016. And we round up on the foreign scene, where a UK court has released a former governor of Delta State, Mr. James Ibori. He was released last Wednesday afternoon. Mr. Ibori was sentenced to prison for 13 years after he had pleaded guilty to a 10-count charge of fraud and money laundering in February 2012. The former governor's case was heard in London after prosecutors argued that although much of the activity in question took place in Nigeria, some money did pass through Britain and British banks. During his trial, a London court heard the stolen fortune was used to buy six foreign property and a fleet of cars, although the judge said the total amount stolen may in fact be in excess of £200 million. He is out of prison after three and a half years of his sentencing. And that's the program for today. If you missed any part of it, don't forget that you can find it in past episodes on our YouTube channel. Please share your feedback with us via any of our social media platforms. I'm Shola Shiyeli. Thank you for watching.